State bicycle company got its start in the late 2000s with the Fixie craze, offering a whole bunch of steel fixed gear and single speed bikes, consumer direct for really super reasonable prices. More than a decade later, however, the company has definitely diversified and this new 6061 black label series all road bike is a really good example of that. Pricing has crept up compared to those early fixies. It's still pretty reasonable. It, this one goes for US uh, $1,400. Pretty good. I mean, overall, it looks the part of a nice bike. You've got a 6061 hydroformed and TIG welded frame, pretty decent shaping everywhere. You have a full carbon fork up front. For this price range, you do obviously have some compromises. You've got some pretty generic cockpit component, for example, you have mechanical disc brakes. Otherwise, State has done a pretty good job of including a whole bunch of niceties on here. For example, you have tubeless compatible aluminum wheels uh, wrapped with really nice tubeless compatible Vittoria Torino Zero tires. You also have a rebranded Sensa drivetrain that uses a one by 11 format with integrated brake shift levers. Uh, in terms of mounts, that's pretty minimal. Uh, you have two bottle cages uh, inside the main triangle, nothing underneath the down tube, no top tube mounts up here. You can put front and rear fenders on here though, if you wanna kind of have a cheaper rain bike. In terms of tire clearance, State officially approves this bike for 700 by 45 mil tires or 650 by 50s. What's nice is during the ordering process, because State is consumer direct, you do have a whole bunch of options. For example, if you want to go with like some zip carbon wheels, you can go with that. If you want to swap out to a different saddle, something more name brand, you certainly have that option. Uh, and speaking of 650B, if you want to just get a 650B set up straight from the factory, you can do that and the cost is the same. So it's pretty neat that you have that option. Uh, State offers these bikes in five sizes. And unlike a lot of bikes right now, these are actually in stock. So you can actually go buy one. So overall, State seems to have done a pretty good job with this bike. The weight's not even really that bad, all things considered. You're looking at 10.36 kilos without pedals or accessories in this, uh, what State calls a size small. Seems to be the case that State has delivered a very premium looking bike at, at a pretty good bargain price. However, does the performance live up to the appearance? Like, do you actually get a premium riding bike for a bargain price? Or is it kind of more a case of like putting lipstick on a pig? Well, we're gonna go hit the roads and steamboat here and go find out. Okay, the moment you have all been waiting for. It's time to talk about this state. Hands down, our Fave? No, not really our favorite bike. This bike was interesting. We definitely have a lot to talk about with this one. Uh, some high points and some low points. Uh, Dave... Some high points, more low points. What are the high points? Are we gonna get to that? <sighs> Sorry. Oh, that's so harsh. Dave, let's start with you. What did you like about this bike? Uh, I think it looks more expensive than it actually is. Uh, what, what about like, like ride quality, handling, stuff like that? I mean, it, it, I think they did a pretty decent job with like the, the, like the frame geometry and stuff, right? Yeah, my feeling with the bike was when I was just pedaling it on the road, I took it on a mix of gravel and on the road. Um, it goes straight really well. It's when I was trying to get more playful with it that I had a little bit more feedback. But as far as a bike to just take out and pedal, um, yeah, I think it did really well. Okay. Yeah. yeah, It's not as smooth as I'd like it to be, but the geometry is, is good. Like the frame seems sturdy it's i've got very little to complain about with the frame yeah it is on the stiffer side as you said like when you try to get a bit more playful it it, it starts to feel a bit like a cheaper bike but it handles pretty well uh, i think the geometry is pretty close in the scheme of things i mean it's kind of looking at the charts and kind of translating that into sort of how it feels it's a maybe a little bit of an odd juxtaposition because the front end kind of feels like kind of like more cross bikey it's fairly steep um, so the steering is pretty responsive, I feel like. Uh, the bottom bracket's not that low. It's 68 millimeters of drop, so it's, it, it's maybe a little bit quicker to change directions, sort of, but then the back end's really pretty long. So State says you can fit, uh, I think it's a 700 by 45 mil tire in here, which is pretty big. Yeah. But in order to do that, they stretch the back end long, a long way behind you. So it's like the front end is pretty quick to kind of move in a certain direction, but then it's kind of like you're dragging the anchor behind you a little trailing. bit. Right? behind you, yeah. yeah. Which I guess in fairness, they don't market this as being like a super quick handling bike, I don't think, and they, it's sort of just like a do-all. I mean, they, they say it's an all-road bike, right? Mm -hmm. um, which I guess also translates to those tires that you were talking about, Ellen, like these, 
Vittoria Tornado Zeros are a little bit of a surprising spec on here because it is quite a high-end tire. Like they are certainly on pavement, they're, they roll fast, they're, they're impressively grippy, they feel good. Um, and then I think, uh, and basically on off-road, as long as it wasn't too loose, they actually were not bad. I think for like packed dirt, they were pretty good. Packed dirt and tarmac, anything more than that, I didn't like them. Not my favorite if it was loose. Right? Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Like, like yes, tires. Yeah, yeah. like yesterday yeah. we were doing a bunch of video filming on a section of road that was uh, kind of like someone dropped a bunch of marbles on the ground mm -hmm. and it was not Didn't ideal. Didn't work out the way I planned. Uh, that tire, like, kudos them for putting quite a high end tire on that bike. That is right. a tubeless ready tire. Their bike's more expensive on test that don't have tubeless ready tires. So, I mean, the bike is, in theory, closer to being ready to put take the tubes out than some of the others that we have here. Right. Uh, and then drivetrain-wise, I feel like at this price point, it's like 1400 US, State obviously had to get pretty creative. Um, and, you know, Dave, you mentioned that it's sort of like their own drivetrain, but it's just a rebranded Sensa setup, which uh, for anyone who has run SRAM mechanical road shifting before, it should be pretty familiar, like that action, very similar. The double tap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, decently wide range gearing. It's like an 1142, I think, in the back. And then with a 42 tooth chain ring up front. Decent range, 11 speed. It's not bad. Yeah. And for 1400 bucks, I think mean, on paper it looks pretty good, right? Yeah. Uh, I found ergonomics aren't terrible with that shifter. Uh, I believe SRAM is better. SRAM have the brake lever and then you have the lever, the shift lever behind it. This one combines the two, so your brake lever is the double tap shifter. Right, there's just the one lever. There's one lever doing brakes and both directions of the shifting, which I think is actually probably more complicated to, to learn than it needs to be. I think a lot of people new to cycling will probably struggle with the, that concept that, yeah, I, I'd imagine that that's gonna be quite a steep learning curve. Okay. I also had issues with the, the chain on the cassette not necessarily staying on the cog I wanted it to. Uh, we've got it adjusted correctly, but the second you have like a slight pause in, say you're trying to ratchet your pedals backwards in a slight technical spot, the chain has a habit of jumping down the cassette. And, and you, you were saying that the chain line is a little bit off? Chain line seems like it's a little bit off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I didn't measure it, but just eyeballing it, it seemed like it's a little too far to the outside. Yeah, so that's the chain rings just sort of sitting a bit too far out, which means the chain is kind of being forced to follow in that line. Right. Yeah. Um, but all in all, I think the drivetrain was okay. Uh, there's no clutch on the rear derailleur, which is a, kind of a bummer. Um, it's just a, an adjustable cage tension on the spring. Mm -hmm. So, eh, again, $1,400 is not the end of the world. But let's talk about the brakes. Ellen, I would love to hear what you thought about these. Yeah, I think the brakes are really, were really one of the couple of things that stood out to me that takes what's a relatively decent bike and really can impact our overall kind of, I think all of our feelings about this bike. Just go um, ahead and say it. Don't pull any punches here. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm, yeah, the, I'm, I'm it, sensing it felt like, that you want to go a little bit deeper. It felt like the brakes were seized pretty much out of the box. And uh, you know, you take a brand new bike, you take it out of the box and you build it up and you want to feel like it's new bike day. And mm -hmm. this feels like worse than I would ever bring my bike into a mechanic day. And James had already lubed the cables from how we received the bike. Yeah, so, and I've noticed that over the course of the week as we've been like using it a little bit, it's getting a little bit better, but it's still, it's, it's so bad. And I'm like very sensitive to brakes in kind of in general with uh, like the shifters and the brake levers, because I have small hands. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I have kind of like my hand on the pulse of what good brakes are. And this is like, I didn't even feel safe riding this bike, which I think really says something. And I'm I, like- I wasn't safe riding this bike. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because as far as brakes go, I think, especially for people who are a little bit newer to riding, I think people have the idea that brakes are almost a little bit more of like an on off binary thing, mm -hmm. which in reality, I mean, Ellen, you're a really skilled rider. You are really adept at being able to kind of like feather that brake control mm -hmm. normally to right. get the bike to do what you want to do. But in this case, like the spring tension is so high on that mechanical caliper. And then even when you kind of muster up the hand strength to get mm -hmm. those pads to bite at that point, 
there's so the the level of control is so inconsistent. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 basically why you crashed, Dave, right? Like, yeah, I I tried to lock the rear brake to go into a skid, and I couldn't lock the rear brake, and, and then I, I did, ended up instead throwing myself on the ground as you do. So the video yeah. is spectacular. Yeah. Uh, so but the thing that kind of bums me out is this is not the only bike that we've had in this group that had mechanical brakes. Like right. Like. You and I loved that salsa, for example. Mm -hmm. Mechanical disc brakes. Yeah. Worked great. Yeah, and you know, for me, like half of my cyclocross career I spent on canties. I was like one of the last riders to switch to disc brakes. Mm -hmm. So I'm very familiar with poor braking power, but it like feels good. You know, you just need to be able to like pull on it a lot. But this mm -hmm. was inconsistent, and we even touched on this last night in the podcast that some of the features on a few of these bikes, I think most of us were thinking about these brakes in particular. It takes it from being an unpleasant experience to making it unsafe. Agreed. And we all had conversations this week about like, do you feel comfortable riding this on the road with not really being able to tell whether or not you're going to be able to stop in a predictable way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have good things to say about this bike, but I think that the brakes are bad enough that it makes it not a bike that I would really want to recommend yeah. to someone as is. Uh, I would go as far to say that it's irresponsible to be selling this bike with those brakes. Mm because the amount of effort required to pull those brake levers, like I feel like I've got pretty good grip strength from you know, wrenching on bikes for 15 plus years. And I felt like I nearly didn't have the hand strength to slow the bike down in a sufficient time. And even when I like, you know, tried hard and I was fresh, I still, the braking distance was terrible. Three, four hours into a ride after you've done that and your arms are completely fatigued. One hour into a ride. You're gonna crash. Yeah. You're not gonna, like, you're going to end up hurting yourself with these brakes. And I, honestly, I cannot recommend this bike to anyone based purely on the brakes. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, as, as you said, it, it's unsafe. Yeah. Um, which, again, is disappointing because I feel like State clearly put a decent amount of money into certain areas of the bike and you know, the product manager's job is to figure out how to kind of pull out the best, to me, I feel like the best balance of performance out of a, of a, out of a bike in total. And that seems like an area where they made the wrong decision as far as where to save money. Um, because again, not only is it super high effort, it's incredibly inconsistent, um, wasn't, didn't come set up very well out of the box, and it, which is important to note because it's a consumer direct bike. B big problem there. Even when they fix the brakes, there were some other issues though. Like a hole where there shouldn't have been. Yes, uh, it's a pinned rim, so just sleeve joint. Normally you'd expect not to see a hole at the sleeve. Uh, we, it's an 18 mil wide rim, so not super wide. We installed a 25 millimeter wide rim tape, which should have been plenty to fill up the sides. And yet we were still having to wear safety glasses to stop getting sealant in our eyes. You could literally see daylight because of a hole in the seam. Like yes. I could hold it up to the light and I could see where the, yeah. Yeah, so you got creative with plugging it and uh, uh, I, yeah, we didn't have a whole lot of things that we brought with us here. So yeah. I used some dryer lint out of the yeah. dryer in our Airbnb house. Worked great. Yeah. So in a pinch, dryer lint is actually quite a good tubeless plug material if you need it. But there might be some hair in there need too. need to do that. And normally with this type of thing, we'd say it's a warranty issue, it's a one-off. But I've now heard from enough people that have built these bikes, it's a common occurrence. So I think that's, the quality control, it's, there's a theme here. So we just, that's what, another thing that we'd like to see better. On top of that, saddle comfort for me is Ellen, one. that was your favorite saddle, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> mm. Must have misunderstood that one. Uh, I think we referred to this one as the ass splitter. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> I'm just gonna say, I'm very thankful that ASOS was sponsoring this field test because those like those gravel bibs almost made me able to sit in that saddle. <laughs> almost. Uh, like it's got a very thick chamois, and I was I was able to stay in that saddle, but we did like a five minute climb, and at that point I would have just been quite happy to remove the seat post entirely because I was not going to sit down again. Yeah, I mean it's it's another example where I feel like someone just made a poor decision that maybe wasn't even necessarily based on cost because at this OEM level, there are just a countless options for types of saddle shapes that you can go with. And this one is basically kind of a knockoff of a Physique Arione, which 
is a high-end looking yeah. saddle. Like it yeah. looks cool. It's like like long and sleek and looks sporty yeah. and whatever. Yeah. But it's super narrow. Yeah. Um, it 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 just doesn't really offer that much support. Um, it's quite firm. Even just after a few days, the rails are loose in the shell to the point yeah. where it's kind of like knocking around and making a bunch of noise. Not just not good. Yeah. Even like the handlebars and stems. Like the finishing kit is just super super cheap. Yeah. We had a lot of issues with build quality too, right? Because this is a consumer direct bike. Like it's supposed to be just. Shows up at your doorstep, pull it out, kind of assemble a couple of things, you're good to go, right? Yep. Not really what happened. No, like you're, you're a mechanic in a past career and you spent a bit of time getting it so right. It came with a super bent rear derailleur hanger, rear rotor was super bent, uh, neither of the brakes were aligned very well, the, the handlebar tape was wrapped from the wrong direction, so if we had left it that way, it would have unraveled itself. Uh, like the brake levers were installed in kind of a funky position. And they didn't pull to the pull in? and they, they were there impossible to pull. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. A bunch of problems for this one. Yeah, all right, who's this for? Here, here's the thing, I, I have, I can, State is not asking a ton of money for this bike. On paper, it had the potential to be a pretty decent all-round bike, I would say. $1,400 is not bad. Yeah. Looks good, uh, it kind of hits a lot of the key points like integrated brake shift levers, good tires, decent gearing, all that other stuff. But the, the brakes are a complete unforgivable miss for me. Yes. Uh, same thing with the hole in the rim. Unfortunately for me, I would say, who is this bike for? Like, I would say it's someone who is like looking for a bargain-ish at all cost and is willing to fix a bunch of stuff on their own. Because if they're looking for like a real consumer direct bike that's ready to go, like, I, I'm sorry, I, I've ridden other state bikes that were pretty okay, and this isn't one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think state needs to, to fix those brakes, and then we can reassess who it's for. Let's say that they do fix the brakes, like we've already kind of talked about. I think if you're someone who has like strictly ridden road, road bikes forever, and you maybe want to like dabble in going off-road, this would be fine, but like the stiffness of the ride and sort of the lack of playfulness uh, isn't really for anyone who has big like mountain bike or underbiking aspirations. So this is maybe for someone who wants to be able to go on the gravel path locally. But yeah, the, the brakes really just make it sort of impossible to recommend for anyone at the moment. It's a no-go. It's a no-go. Sorry, State. So close, yet so far. Those are our thoughts on the State 6061 Black Series All Road. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. We'll address them as soon as we can. Make sure you check out the full written review at cyclingtips.com. Make sure you hit like or subscribe down below so you don't miss any upcoming content from this year's field test. Thanks again to ASOS for sponsoring this year's field test. And stay tuned for some more content coming soon.